What did you say to your fa when your family found out you were going to be a drag queen? But you are. I'm not a drag queen. Well, you are I'm sometimes. When he put on dresses and drag, real drag, I mean, he looked better than me. He loved to shop. That was his middle name. And he would say, I'm shopping for Jesus, girl. <laughs> He did it seamlessly. He was never a drag queen. He was um, a great beauty that came out, and I, I'm sure many straight boys liked him too. From that first picture I saw on the wall of him, I thought, wow, okay. Something clicked there and said, well, okay. If he can do it, you can do it. He was wonderful. Sylvester was so wonderful and an incredible singer. I mean, everyone was overawed by his talent. I mean, he had the goods. very short time for him to become famous. He was sort of doing a Boy George thing before the world was ready for it. Well now you got this big black gay man that's just out there being as flamboyant as he wants to do. What are you going to, how are you going to market him? My first impression of Sylvester, I think, was a very correct one. That he was probably the most talented one in the Cockettes at the time. Somebody got the idea Sylvester should do his own show because he's always stopping the show. He wasn't a hippie with a beard and a dress. This was um, Billie Holiday and Diana Ross on LSD. There was a difference between Androgyne and having a big old black queen up there somewhere. He couldn't be accepted by rock and roll, and he, you know, I think left very uh, disturbed and dejected, and that's when he began, this is like 74, 75, began to move more into a disco sound. Hi, no telling what you might see in Golden Gate Park, and we're even here. My name is Sylvester, and these are the two tons of fun, and we'd like you to listen to our new release, Can't Stop Dancing. Sylvester signed with uh, Fantasy and Step 2 is the first album. It took off like a rocket and uh, before you know it, it was a gold record. As that happened, he became less and less interested in hiding his gayness. Got a man? The fabulous club. Look at all the fabulous people. You want to dance? Yes, I'd love to. Let's party a little bit. We were pretty quickly in Europe because it was released pretty simultaneously and caught on as almost as quickly as here, you know. It was a great success, I mean, which was surprising almost to all of us that everything was sold out. Major concerts in the Netherlands and England, Paris, Germany, Italy. The first time that I saw his name in lights and two tons of fun in lights was at the Hammersmith Odeon in London.
when he came back from France, I asked him, how did it go? And he said, well, it was fantastic. I, I got off the plane and there were people waiting for me, waving from behind barricades, saying, Sylvestre, Sylvestre. And he just loved that. You are my friend. I never knew. culminating, I think, fantasy that he lived out was to play the Opera House in San Francisco. The Opera House was completely sold out. This was a major black tie event in the city. Just an array of different people, people with their backsides out, to uh, women in ball gowns, all coming to see Sylvester. He had handfuls of glitter and he came out and he twirled and just how it worked was so amazing. And Sylvester remembered every word to every song, which he was not known to do, and went through this show in front of 3,000 people on acid. I mean, could you imagine? You are my friend. Gay, dance music, black, drag queen, 1980, 1979. Give me a break. No way. By Sylvester never compromising his sexuality, did create a lot of problems. It was a directive from Fantasy Records to say, Sylvester, we want you and your image to be more like Teddy Pendergrass. They shot this like video with him in a suit and like a little sports car. I was really tired, and he went along with it for a minute, for a minute. Sylvester's response to that was he came to this big, a, a really big you know, gathering at Fantasy and kind of like made his entrance in, I think, a pink chiffon flowing gown and kind of like sashayed down the staircase and then blew a lot of people away. I took the elevator up to the president's office and uh, marched in and said, you know, you want to change my image? This is my image and it's what has been and always will be. Sylvester just did not want to go off and check everything. You know, his logic was like, I'm not spending $15 to see if I have HIV. Of course, I've been this mad queen like everyone else, and I'm sure I'm infected. The word was getting out that, you know, Sylvester is sick. He's old girl, don't worry about me, I'm, I'm fine. And when Sylvester became ill, they let me know that it would be important to him if I could come and see him. And we held hands, and I think we sang together. When I went to visit him, that's when he told me he had AIDS. In the parade, I see somebody pushing this very emaciated black guy in a wheelchair. Those moments of silence when they first saw him coming, and then just cheering and screaming. I almost completely burst into tears. I just couldn't believe it because he was so he was so identified with the experience of Gay Day. You know that you would see him perform, and no one had known that he was sick. I thought it was uh, incredibly brave of him. We stood by him all the way to the end. If Sylvester was alive today, he'd have a great show. He'd be at the Carlisle, sitting right by the piano. I don't think Sylvester got the respect that he deserved. If only God gave him more time here, he would have blown the roof off of things. We have come so far in the fight against homophobia, so it's not as bad as it used to be. But it ain't over, baby. And I wish there were a few more Sylvesters that were bold enough and talented enough to step up to the plate and sing out. If I had one person to know in my life, it would be Sylvester. You know, I haven't buried him. He's not gone. He's, I feel, I told Patti LaBelle, I said, I feel like he's just on tour and he's gonna call me and say, well, girl, you know, it's cold here and I wish you were here and what's happening there, you know? I haven't gotten the phone call yet, but I haven't buried him either. He is a wonderful soul. He lives in all of us, you know? The part of me that flames and does whatever in my life, I think of that as a piece of Sylvester, you know, and celebrating. I'm so